Hello, Math 120, and this is Professor Gonzalez, and I'd like to do some problems from homework, section 3.6. And uh, in this section, we're taking a look at inequalities and graphing inequalities into a two space on x, comma, y, the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system. Um, I went ahead and started off with doing some um, uh, graphing of inequalities of one inequality. Um, really, what we're supposed to be looking at at 3.6 is we're looking at a system of inequalities, two, um, two inequalities in a system, right? Three, chapter three is all about systems. Um, but I really thought that we should spend a little time uh, doing these individual um, inequalities just to kind of get used to graphing one at a time before we step it up and do two at a time. So here's my first attempt at that. Let me unplug this so I can have space to operate. And it says, a graph the linear um, inequality, y is less than, I mean right here, y is less than 7x plus 4. So we got this step-by-step -step, uh, deal that kind of gets us to baby step through it. Um, and here's what it says. It's given us, there's there's multiple ways of doing this, but this is, a, this is a good enough way. Step number one, replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign. Now what I would do before I actually do that is I would probably um, take a little note here and say, uh, let's see here. When you have a less than symbol, um, where else can I put a note? Let me put a note down here. So when when you're graphing linear inequalities, when you have a less than, try that again, when you have a less than or greater than symbol, that's telling you that's telling us that the, the points on the line are not part of the solution. And when you graph your your line, you're going to have to make it a dotted or dashed line because that just tells us that the points on the line are not part of the solution. It's it's either side is part of the solution. And this will make more sense when we start doing this. But if you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that little equal sign means that the points on the line are part of the solution. So in that case, you're going to make a solid line. So when you see less than or equal, when you see this equal sign below, you're going to make a solid line. And when you see um, just less than or greater than without an equal sign, you're going to make, whoops, not an S, you're going to make a dotted or dashed line. Okay, so that's a little uh, note that uh, could help out. So let's start with that. Now let's take a look at this. It's saying, how about if we take this and replace with just an equation. And they're just, they're saying uh, replace the inequality with an equation just because we're really used to solving or graphing equations more than we're used to graphing inequalities. So, so it's easy enough just to start off like that. Okay. Now we can't just replace it and say that's what it is. We're just temporarily replacing it to get our line. Okay. We're temporarily, temporarily replacing it to get our line. So now they're asking us, what's the slope? Well, the slope, of course, is it's in slope-intercept form, so it's 7. And, of course, we like to think of it as 7 over 1. Um, and what's our y-intercept? Well, there it is right there. It's 4 or 0, 4. So this helps us graph the line. So they'd like us to plot the y-intercept first. Here we are right here, plot the y-intercept first, and then use the slope to plot the other line, other points, rather. So we plot our y-intercept at 4. And then, of course, the slope is up 7 and over 1. So we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're off the graph, which we don't like. But remember, you can always, if, if uh, the slope gets you off the graph, you could always write what is 7 over 1 equal to. Well, negative 7 over negative 1 is still positive 7. So then you'd go down 7 and left one. So from here, you could also go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left one, which is the same exact line. Now, I said um, that from the beginning, and I'm gonna go back to my color here. I said that, uh, maybe use, let's use another color. I said that when it's an inequality without the equal sign, this is gonna have to be a dotted line. So we're, we wanna make a dotted line. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I don't really have a dotted function on this particular. When you do it on, um, when you do this on my uh, math lab, 
uh, there will be, um, you click on the, the, the line and then there's an option to do dotted or solid, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and make it solid and I, then I guess I'll go back and do some erasing. So something like that. And then I'll just go back and do this partial erase business, decent sized one, that should work. Just come through and erase some of it. Now I've got myself, whoops, a dashed line, okay? So there it is, I wish it was a little bit darker. Um, next time I think I'll use a heavier pen, but you can see it right there. So now that's not the full um, answer. They're just baby stepping us through this process to get used to it. Now we want the full solution here, okay? So now we already have our line graphed. Well, I don't know why I want to do this twice. Um, in the in the I just ran through this uh, with my lab just to see how they're graphing this stuff. Um, and so at this point, it just duplicates this this uh, graph right here down here, and then it wants you to do the shading. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So how do you do the shading? Well, what we want to do is we want to get a test point, and they're saying, why don't we use Zero, 0, and I think zero, 0, is an awesome test point because it's so easy to multiply and add with zeros. Now, if your line happened, to, now let's look at our line. Our line goes like this. I'm just going to kind of dot through here. Our line does not go through 0. If your line went through 0, you could not use it because we're trying to figure out which, which side to sheet on, the right side or the left side. And... Um, and I wish, let's see, I wish this had, I wish I had a little bit, right, something like that. I wish it was, um, it was clear here that it's definitely, I know it's definitely not going through zero, but I wish it was a little further just to illustrate that a little better. But zero is not on the line. Zero is clearly on this right-hand lower side of it. So that is zero comma zero. And I'm going to put zero, zero in for, zero for X and zero for Y. So you can see that I've got a Y here, so I'm gonna put a zero in for there, for Y. And you can also see I have um, an X right there. And so I'm gonna put in a zero for X. And so then, of course, of course, a seven times zero is zero. And then I add four to that, so I get this statement. Zero is less than four. Is that true or false? Well, that's definitely true. So because this 0, 0,0 0 is on the true side, that's the side that you're gonna shade. So my solution looks something like this. Now, what does that mean? That means that any point x, comma, y, let's just say I've got this point right here. Any point x, comma, y that makes this original inequality true will be on the shaded side. Once again, if I happen to grab this point and test it, what point is this? This is five comma negative three. If I put in a five for X and a negative three for Y, that will be a true statement. And also, I'll use another color. What if I put in a point over here, X comma Y? It will be false. Any point over here will give us a false um, a false statement. It won't be true when we put it into our original inequality. So really what the shading is, is it's telling us all the answers that actually work. So all of these points over here will give us a true, will make the statement to the inequality true. And the reason why it's dotted because the points on the line don't make it true. It's really just like a border telling us between true and false um, solutions. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, let's see. As Phil said, that was true. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next problem, number two. So this problem is already in slope-intercept form. So what did they say? They said, well, why don't we go ahead and uh, why don't we go ahead and write that as an equation? And I would say before you write it as an equation, as I as I don't, but I would I would go ahead and make sure. You look at that inequality, which means my line's going to have to be dotted, right? You want to remind yourself because 
because once you change it to an equation, you just feel like making a line because that's what that is, right? If it's an equation, it's just going to be a solved line, and that's it. But we got to do more than that. But we're, we're putting it as equation just to help us to remember how to graph. Okay, it crosses at 5, so that's my y-intercept at 5. Then it has a slope of, of down 3 and right 1. So I go down 1, 2, 3, right 1, 1, 2, 3, right 1. I go ahead and make my dog, I don't know if you can hear my dog again, is snoring once again. I should be snoring right now, actually. I can go like this. Let's see, there's my line. And so there is the graph. Of course, we said it needs to be dotted, so I'm going to go back and dot it. So there's the dotted or dashed line. Now we have to figure out which side do we shade it on. Now, the way you do that, so we'll call this a test point. That's definitely too big. So we'll now call this a test point. So test point. And what's the best test point to use? The easiest one, at least. As long as this line is not going through 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is our easiest test point because 0 and 0 is so easy to work with. So we go back to our original um, inequality, which says y is less than negative 3 times x plus 5. And of course, we put in a 0 for y and a 0 for x. And we get 0 is less than. Of course, that becomes 0. And we got 5. Is it true that 0 is less than 5? Is that true or false? And we're going to say that is true. So the side where we got 0, 0 is true. That means that's the side we shade on. So we go ahead and shade that. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, and then we shade over here. And so we're saying all of the answers that are true are going to be on the side that we tested to be true. Now, if we tested this and it was false, then we'd have to shade on the opposite side, and we'll see that happen coming up. Next problem. Okay, now um, we're going to do the same technique of grabbing this uh, inequality. Like I said, I want to start out to remind yourself that because of the equal sign, this is going to be solid. Shh, dog. So solid. Um, now, okay, so this is going to be solid. So now um, what we want to do is we want to um, write this as an equation. So we've got 2x. 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. So we, we're going to go ahead and graph that line. Now, on a lot of these, what I would recommend is just to put it in slope-intercept form because we're so good at graphing that. I do want to show um, this technique of using x and y intercepts because um, that is also another way you can do this. So let's, let's do this one. Probably the rest of them I'll just use slope-intercept form. But x-intercept, if I want my x-intercept you have to set y equal to 0. And when you set y equal to 0, this whole term just becomes 0, and we're left with 2x equals negative 6, divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 3. Right? And so that's nice because our x-intercept is negative 3. And so we put a little negative 3 right there. And then if we want our y-intercept, right, we know at our y-intercept, x must be 0. So if we put in a 0 for x, that whole term goes away, and I'm left with 3y equals negative 6, divide by 3, and yeah, it's not, you know, these equals, y equals negative 2. So I would say if if you end up with nice x and y intercepts that are whole numbers, or integers rather, I would, you know, this is not a bad way. And how do you know it's they're going to be nice integers? Well, when the coefficient in front of the x is divisible um, by the constant on the right and the coefficient in front of the y is divisible by the constant on the right, then you will have nice um, x and y intercepts. If it's not divisible, then you're going to have fractions, and that's really no fun. In that case, I'd probably just recommend putting it into a slope-intercept form, which I like to do that way on most occasions anyways. So now we've got our y-intercept is negative 2, so we'll go ahead and graph negative 2. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and 
plot this. We already said this is going to be solid. So let's go ahead and make a solid line. And that means I'm going to go from here through here. And from here to here. There's my solid line. Now I need to figure out which side do I need to um, uh, shade on. So of course my easiest point to check is 0 comma 0, right? So this is going to be called TP, a test point. And that test point is 0 comma 0. And what do I use? I use my original inequality right there. Original inequality was 2 times x plus 3 times y is less than negative 6. It's the inequality that causes the shading. So you got to ha have that original inequality. You cannot just use the equation that was used to graph it. And using the equation to graph it is, you know, um, that's not super necessary um, when you get really good at these, but it is kind of nice because we're used to graphing equations. So that's kind of why this book does that, I believe. But anyways, we're using 0, 0 as a test point. So we put in 0 for x and 0 for y. Of course, the beauty of that makes 0 and 0. So we got 0 is less than or equal to negative 6. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 6? And I would say that is false. So let me, um, let me go with another color here. I would say that's false. So we, we used our test point of 0, 0, and it was false. That means don't shade that side. So that means my solutions, my solutions that will work with this problem are going to be on this side, the opposite side, the true side, right? If this is the false side, then that means this is the true side that has all the true answers. And once again, you could always test it by putting some points in there, and that will make this original inequality true. And any point over here will make the inequality false. Any point over here will make the inequality true, and that's why we shade it. Because that's saying, these are my answers. There's infinitely many x, comma y points that'll work, but they have to come from the shaded side of this graph. Let's take a look at number four. Sorry, yeah, number four. So number four um, is another problem that, you know, you can either use x and y intercepts or you can just put it in slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is going to be easy enough, right? because we've got uh, 5x plus y equals 0, and we subtract 5x on both sides of the equation, and we get y equals negative 5x. Of course, y-intercept is 0. Um, before we get too far into this whole thing, I think I'm going to say, look at that inequality, so this must be dotted. And that I, I really recommend doing that because it's so easy to forget, um, especially when you turn this into an equation. So now my y-intercept is 0. And the slope is negative 5, which just means go down 5 and write 1. So we go down 5 and write 1, and there we go. Um, whoops, right there. So let's go ahead and plot that line. It's going to be dotted, so I'm going to have to deal with that later. Of course, when you do this in my math lab, they have a function that dots it for you. So you just have to be aware of that. And there it is. And my dotting function is this little guy right here. And I just come through, and I guess I could just go like this, probably. Look at that. And it's dotted, okay? So now i got to figure out which side to shade on. So what I want to do, whoops, that's way too big. But what? So I need to go smaller. What I need to do is I need to use a test point. I get to pick any test point I want. Now, normally we pick 0, 0, cause, just because it's so easy to work with. But 0, 0 is on the line, so it's not going to tell me which side to shade on. So 0, 0 doesn't work. Pick any other point that's not on the line. And I think that one right there is not so bad either. That is 1, 0. You could pick 1, 1 or negative 1, 0 or negative 2. It doesn't matter, but I picked something that had easy numbers to work with. So what was our original inequality? It was 5 times x, I'm just copying this, plus y is less than 0. So now I'm picking, I'm not using 0, 0. Let me get that out of there. So I need the space this time. So I'm going to use 1, 0. So I put in a 1 for x and a 0 for y. 
and I get 5 times 1 is 5. Is 5 less than 0? Is that true or false? Is 5 less than 0? No, that is false. So um, that means that the stuff on this side, right, the point test point was there, and that was false. That means I better shade on the true side. So that's over here. So I shade over here to the left, and that shows me all my answers that work. The dotted line indicates that points on the line do not work, though. Okay, enter number five. This is a system of linear inequalities. There's still lines, and it's two of them at the same time, and you're still shading. So what could the solution possibly be? Well, the solutions, the x and y points, must be true for the first inequality and the second inequality. So what that means is the double shaded region is going to be your solution. Let's check it out. So what I'm going to do is um, use some color. I'll just use color every single time now because I've got two graphs that must be shaded. I'll go ahead and use green here. And I think what I want to do is I want to indicate, and this, whoops, it's equal. So this is going to be a solid line. And um, and all these, for some reason, they have them both solid and, or both dotted, but they could be solid or dotted. I mean, it could be a combination, but because of that equal sign right there, this one's also solid. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and do some of our solving here. Um, I think we have space right here to go down here. I'm just going to write this out. Three, oops, the first one was in green. So the first one's in green, so that's 3x plus y is less than or equal to 4. Now remember what our trick was, not trick, but the recommendation is to, how about if we just go ahead and solve it as an equation. So you can either use slope-intercept form or whatever, and I'm going to use slope-intercept form. So I'm just going to subtract 3x from both sides. This gives me y equals negative 3x plus 4. So now I'm going to go ahead and graph that line. The y-intercept is at 4, and the slope is, what, negative 3? So that just means slope of negative 3 means go down 3 and write 1. 1, 2, 3, write 1. And now I'm going to have my solid line that I'm going to graph. So let me go ahead and me thicken it up just a little bit there. It's going to look something like this. And it's solid. Now I need to figure out... Um, which side to graph on, right? So I'm going to use a test point. I take my original, I guess I'll go up here since I can see it. I take my, so test point. What test point do you want to use? Well, I would like to use 0, 0, because that's so easy to work with. And the equation that I see in green up top, the original is 3 times x plus y is less than or equal to 4. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's put in a 0 for x and a 0 for y. And of course, this all just becomes 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 4? Is that true or false? 0 is definitely less than or equal to 4, so that's true. And so when we take a look at here, our test point came from right here, right? 0, 0 was our test point. And by the way, that was true when we put that in there. So that means we need to shade towards that true statement. Now I'm going to... I'm going to shade very sparingly because, remember, the solution is going to be the double shaded region. So if you just go crazy and shade like crazy now, well, it's just going to be such a mess. So I've got my green uh, inequality done. Now I need to do the red one. I'll do the red one in red, and I think I'll be able to squeeze that right up here. And we'll go ahead and say um, negative x plus y equals negative 9. Negative x plus y equals negative 9. I'm going to add x to both sides. I get y equals x minus 9. So that means my y-intercept is negative 9, which is right here. And it means my slope is 1, 
Of course, the slope of 1 just means go up 1 and right 1. Go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, and so on. This is a solid line. Let's go ahead and take care of business here. So that means, whoop, that means this guy goes like this. Okay, now we need to figure out which side to actually shade. So we're going to go ahead and um, call this test point. I'm going to use the test point of 0, 0 right here again because 0, 0 is not on my line and 0, 0 is so easy to work with. I take my original red equation which says the opposite of x, negative x plus y, is greater than or equal to negative 9. Well, when I put my zeros in for x and y, I just get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 9. Think about that. Is 0 greater than? Yes, it is. That's true. So since this produced a true statement for the red, the red also must be shaded over here above. Now my solution is the double shaded region. So now when you really take a look, and I think what I'll do is I'll use, since I've got a nice highlighter pen, my uh, daughter would tell me that that's not going to match, so she would tell me to get a different color, so I guess I'll follow. So what is double shaded? Well, you can see um, some green here and you can see red here. So this region right here is double shaded. So the solution is going to be the double shaded region. I'm not sure if this is going to be ugly or not. That's not too bad. Solution is the double shaded region. And so I tried to highlight the double shaded region. And, um, and then let's see, maybe I'll come through with some black in a thicker line just to show the solution is the blue. Oh, that's really thick. Jeez. That's too much. That's way too much. And let's see, maybe it was this one I wanted. Now let's go there. So the solution, right, is going to have these sides that are somewhat bounded right here. Now it's not completely bounded. Um, completely bounded means that that blue is locked in. Right, it's open when you go to the left. But there's the solution right there, okay? And the solution is the shaded blue, because it's double shaded green and red, and then the black. And this other stuff is just scratch work, right? Oh, by the way, when you do this um, in uh, my math lab, they got these little paint cans, these little paint buckets that you can move around. <laughs> it's, it's like splashing paint into the area. And... Um, when I first did this, I splashed paint uh, because I did the red one first, right? So this whole side would be splashed paint. And then I splashed paint over here. And then you're like, how do I get rid of that? Okay, what you do is you can highlight that paint bucket and you could actually move it around by dragging it around. But you could also highlight it and then delete it. There's a delete button. There's a clear button, which is going to knock everything out. But there's a delete button um, next to the graphing tools. You can actually delete it out. You don't have to have two paint buckets in here. I tried that. Two works, but you really only have to have one in the solution. But remember, it's the double shaded region that gets the final paint bucket, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, move it on. Um, number six. Okay, so let's go to our color again. We'll start with uh, some green here. And this is number six. And I think um, I'm just taking a look at my notes with color. Oh, for some reason I start, went to red there. It doesn't really matter. Just my own personal notes when I was doing this. But we've got red, so we'll, we'll, we'll make that one red. Important to notice that it's not an equal uh, piece to that. It's just greater than, so that means it's going to be dotted. And uh, we'll go ahead and use green here. And it's important to notice that that is, doesn't have an equal equality to it, so that's also dotted. Um, and that'll be our green inequality. And if we use what the book says, the book says, well, why don't we make this an equation? So 7x plus y equals negative 9 and solve. You can either, well, I think putting it in slope intercept form is just going to be beautiful. So y equals negative 7x um, minus 9. That means my y-intercept is down here at negative uh, 9. And my slope is down 7 and uh, right one. Now down seven and right one totally puts me off this graph 
So another way to, to have a slope, remember the slope right here, m is negative 7 over 1. But I can also make a negative 7 over 1 by saying positive 7 over negative 1. And the only reason why I do that, because remember, negative 7 puts down 7. If I go down 7, i got to go down here, which is hard to keep my scale. But if I, if I change this and say go up 7 and left 1, it's still the same line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, left 1. It's still the same line, but it, it you know, it's, it's keeps me on the graph and keeps me uh, graphing in a cleaner way. So let's go ahead and make that a dotted line now. I think that was the size I used before, so let's try that. Okay, so here it is. I need to make it dotted, so I use my little trick. All right. Okay, so we've got a dotted line, and now we need to figure out um, which side to shade on. So I think what I want to do is say, I'm going to use 0, 0 as a test point. So um, let me come down here, and I'm going to use, of course, my original um, equation, which was 7. So wait, I do want to want to be clean with this. Okay, this is called the test point, and I'm going to use 0, 0. Okay, I'm going to use the inequality 7 times x plus y is greater than negative 9. I'm going to use 0 for x and 0 for y, which gives me 0 is greater than negative 9. And we know that that's true. So our test point that we used was 0, 0 right here, and it was true. That means we must shade on that side. And like I said, don't go crazy with the shading because we're looking for a double shaded region. And that can get very, very messy. Now let's take a look at our next inequality. And remember we said the technique is to take 6x plus 7y instead of less than, let's call equal to, and then use that to graph. We subtract 6x on both sides and we get 7y equals negative 6x plus 7. We divide by 7 on each term, and that gives us, um, let's write it over here so I don't have to move the screen as much, y equals negative 6 over 7, x plus 7 over 7 is 1. Now that means we start here at 1, and we go down 6, which puts us here, and over 1. Nope, over 7. So down 6, which puts us at 5, over 7, which puts us right there. My pen will work. Down 6 over 7. Okay, puts us right there. Now um, I want to make a dotted line. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Let's see if I can be accurate. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Let's go through and turn it into a dotted line. All right. And um, which side do we shade on now? Well, we need to come down here and do our test point. So test point zero, 0, is not on my green line, right? Zero, 0, is right here. So zero, 0, is a fine test point. So I'm going to use 0, comma 0. And I'm going to go to my original inequality, which said, Right here, 6x plus 7y is less than 7. 6x plus 7 times y is... 6x plus 7y is less than 7. So remember my test points, 0 for x and 0 for y, which turns that whole left side to 0. That's why we pick 0 and 0. Is 0 less than 7 true or false? And we are going to say that that is true. 0 is definitely less than 7. And so... Notice the test point was right there, so the true stuff is on this side for the green. So then we shade the green, and you can see it now. The double shaded region is going to be, and um, I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with black. I'm going to make it just a little bit thicker. So 
the double shaded, shaded region was this stuff over here. And of course you can see dotted lines basically showing a boundary line for us. And there's my solution, is the black double shaded region. That actually shows up a little bit better. Let's take a look at number seven. Number seven is, is uh, slightly unusual in some ways. So let's see how that goes. This is number seven. And um, just to reiterate again, this black double shaded region shows all the points. Every point in this black double sh shaded region will be true for the red line and at the same time will be true for the green line. Okay, so you can, I mean, we could even kind of take a look. Um, this area right here that we said true, well, that's true for the green line. So that's all those points in that region from this side, right, this side, this side of the green line will be true for the green. And all points on this side of the red in and out of this black area in the red area is true for the red. But the only ones that are true for the red and green are going to come and land in this area that was double shaded. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Now, this one, let's go ahead and use our color again, just so everybody could see what I'm doing, hopefully. And looks like my pen tip is too uh, heavy. So now, like I said, I like to do this before I use equations because it becomes deceiving. I see an equal sign, this is solid. And let's do this right before we forget. Okay, that's gonna be my green and that is an equal sign, so that is solid. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of business here. Here's the red. I'm gonna temporarily negative five X minus seven Y equals 35. Um, this one actually wouldn't be too bad uh, to use um, X and Y intercepts because everything is divisible, right? Uh, well, not everything, but five goes into 35 and seven goes into 35. Uh, but you could also, let's just continue with our with our same old, same old, which is using slope intercept form, right? So now we've got negative seven Y equals, what's that? Very sloppy, five X plus 35 divide by negative seven. Be careful all these negatives flying around here. Y equals five over negative seven X minus, right? Positive five by negative is negative five. So we've got Y equals um, well, I could put the negative on the top or bottom. I happen to put it on the bottom. So my y-intercept is negative 5. So there's negative 5. And my slope says to go down 7. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to write this as negative 5 over 7 because that... Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. That original one works just fine because what is that saying? Let me just write it out of here. 5 over negative 7 is saying go up 5 and left seven, and that's still on my graph. Go up one, two, three, four, five, left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there it is. Now we said this is gonna be solid, so I don't have to go back and mess around with that. Um, and so here we go, this goes like this. Went a little long. And here. Now which side do we shade on? Right, which side do we shade on? We're going to have to use a test point, TP. Test point, and I'm going to want to use, since it's such a beautiful point to use, 0, 0. And, you know, you get pretty quick. You actually look at this and know what it's going to be. But I just show I show my work here, just in case someone says, well, you know, you can't, I can't hear the questions out there. So I just assume people don't know what's happening. So I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to use the red equation, which is negative 5 times x minus 7 times y, and that must be greater than or equal to 35. So we use 0, comma 0, which gives us, you know, we calculate, then we get 0 is greater than or equal to 35. Is 0 greater than or equal to 35? That is false. 
So because that is false, you must, okay, this is false, right? We used 0, 0, and it was false. That means you shade the opposite side. Whoops. And I always say don't go crazy yet because, because we're, we're really looking for the double shaded region. So that's about as much as I want to do. Now let's go ahead and change pen colors and take care of our take care of our green equation, which said 5x plus 7y equals 35. It almost looks like the same darn equation. I subtract 5x off of both sides, and I get 7y equals negative 5x plus 35. I divide by 7, and this is going to give me y equals negative 5 sevenths x plus 5. Uh, not quite the same, but it looks similar. So 5 is the y-intercept right here, so I go to positive 5. And it says the slope. The slope is right here, which says go down 5 and right 7. Go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and right 7 to here. And so then I go ahead and graph that. It says, it says it's supposed to be a solid line. Let me take a look at that. Supposed to be a solid line. And um, we shade, and now we gotta figure out what to shade. We're gonna use a test point, and that tip is way too thick. Test point. We're gonna use the test point of zero zero. We're gonna take a look at our inequality up there, which says five times x plus seven times y is greater than or equal to 35. Of course, the green one right there I copied down. We're using a 0 for x and y, which gives us 0 is greater than or equal to 35, which is false. So we used 0, and we got a false for the green, which means the true stuff is on the opposite side. Now, the problem here is I'm looking for the x's and y's that will work for the red, right? Okay, the ones, the points that work for the red are all the x comma y's are going to be down here. That works for the red. Even the points on the line will work for the red. At the same time, I need the same points to work for the green. And the problem is, the points that work for the green are the points x, y that are way over here. So these two sets are mutually exclusive, or they do not have any overlap. So you don't have double shaded. So there's no solution. So the answer is no solution. Um, when I'm doing this in class, I usually have the students write out no solution because you can see it doesn't overlap. Now what um, what I noticed my math lab does is after you put the paint out there, then you, you click on the paint bucket and you hit delete um, on both of them. And so what they're going to say the solution is, it's going to get rid of the paint buckets, get rid of the painting, get rid of the, the shading, rather. And then they just leave that as the solution. But it's no solution because there's no... Um, I, I would say that you don't even have to put the lines because, uh, you know, they're not overlapping. But anyhow, um, they did put the lines in. And then they got rid of the shading and said no solution. Okay? So that was... That part was a little bit... I don't know. I didn't agree with that on that. But that's how they did it. Two lines... Shading does not overlap, so no shading. And then hit submit, and it should be good. And I did that also. I double-checked for you. Number eight. This is our final one. Let's see. Nope. We got two more after this. Okay, eight, nine, ten, three total. So um, here we go. So let's go ahead and use some color. Let's go to red. And... Um, before I get going, make sure we know that this red one's going to be solid. And make sure we know that this green one, because of that equality, is going to be solid as well. Let's go back to red and write x plus y equals negative 1. Solve. Put it in slope-intercept form. So y equals negative x minus 1. Graph that y-intercept of negative 1. And what is this slope? Negative 1 over 1, which means down 1, right 1. Down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. That's enough for the points. It does say that it wants to be solid, so let's go ahead and make a nice solid line here. Uh, 
and there it is. Now, 0, 0 is definitely not on the line. It's right there. And because it's right there, that would be an awesome point to use as a test point. So we go back over here and we say TP, test point of 0, 0. We go to our red equation, or not equation, but inequality. And we write it out. X plus Y is less than or equal to negative 1. We put in 0 for x and y, and we get 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. Is 0 less than negative 1? And we would say that's false. So because that's false, the point that we used, 0, 0, produced a false. That means we must shade on the opposite side, the true side. Okay. Let's now do the same procedure except for the green inequality. We're going to take that x plus 5y and make it an equation and solve for y. We subtract 5x on both so we subtract negative sorry we subtract x on both sides and we get 5y equals negative x minus 5. We divide by 5 on each term and that's going to give us right y equals negative 1 fifth x minus 1. So now our y intercept is at negative 1. Oh, it's at the same point. How wonderful is that? That's different and usual, but not, not nothing wrong with it. And our slope is negative 1. Remember, you could put the negative on top or bottom. I'll just say negative, on, negative 1 on top and 5. That means down 1, right 5. Down 1. Uh, let's see. Down 1. Oh, 5. Okay. Down 1, right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there it is. Okay, so that is it for number eight. It's going to be solid. And um, let's get that going over here with the pen. Solid, that's really... That's yeah, not... It's growing. Whoops, don't do that. Ah, stop. Oh my gosh. Okay, it doesn't want me to touch anything right now. Okay, there we go. And that's not going to snap too for some reason. Try again. Okay, so there it is. Now I've got to, I need to get a test point to see which way, which side to shade on. So my test point is going to be, of course, 0, 0. Test point, test point, 0, 0. We go to the green inequality, which said x plus 5 times y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Put in a 0 for x and y, and I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Is that true or false? Is it better to have $0 or owe someone $5? Oh, this is true, right? True, 0 is greater than negative 5, greater than or equal to negative 5. So since my test point of 0, 0 was true, for the green, this is the true side. So we shade on the true side. And now you can see the double shaded region. The double shaded, shaded region is going to be this stuff right here. It's green and it's red. Of course, it's bounded by this guy right here. It's I should not use that word. Bounded means it's all sides are covered in the in the shading. The black shading is is contained. But so we've got these sides to it. Whoops. So there's my solution. Okay, let's move on to number nine. So number nine, um, we've got this inequality again, any system of inequalities. Let's just continue again with our procedures here, a process. Whoops. It's a little slow on the draw there. And it caused a little spot. We've got an X. I'm sorry. We've got it. I'm getting a little crazy here at the end. We have our inequality in red. Note that it is not equal, so this must be dotted. And I'll tell you, so many people mess that up because they just, you know, forget. So take some notes. Note that's dotted because of not having an equal 
sign under there. So then what we do is we take our red inequality and write it as an equation. 3x plus 2y equals 12. Of course, you can do x and y intercepts with this one because it's gonna, they're going to be nice and beautiful, but you can also do slope intercept form. So either way is just fine. Divide by 2, and there you've got y equals negative 3 halves x plus 6. 6 is my y-intercept, and my slope is down 3, right 2. Down 1, 2, 3, right 1, 2, and there we go. We got it. So uh, let's see. This is what, number 9? And so it's got to be dotted which I got to go back and remember to do it because I keep on saying how that's easy to mess up. And so I really don't want to mess up in front of you now. So I got to remember to go back with my little eraser and make it dotted. Okay, now we got to figure out which side do we shade this thing on. Now remember, that point to zero, zero is an awesome point to use as a test point. So that's just what we're going to do. We're going to say test point 0, 0. Go ahead and get your red inequality, which says 3 times x plus 2 times y is less than 12. Of course, putting zeros in just gives us 0 is less than 12. And of course, that is true. So we used this point. It produced true information or a true statement, which means this is definitely the side we want to shade. Don't go too crazy. I was starting to go crazy with my shading there. Don't go too crazy because we're looking for the double shaded. Let's continue down here. Now I've got um, my inequality. I'm going to turn it into equation. Negative 2x plus 3y equals 12. Solve for y, putting in slope-intercept form. Add 2x to both sides. This is now going to give me 3y equals 2x plus 12. And then we divide by 3 and we get y equals 2 thirds x plus 4. So 4 is my y-intercept. So I go up to 4, and it says my slope is up to right 3. Up to right 3. There it is. And I go over here, and I go ahead, crease that. Lead size, it's not lead, digital, whatever, lead. Weight, I think that's what it's called, weight. Weight of the line. And now I need to figure out which side do I shade on. Of course, we do that by using a test point. And our favorite test point is, say it, 0, 0. So we take the inequality, the original, negative 2 times x plus 3 times y is greater than 12. We put in zeros for x and y. We get 0 is greater than 12, which is totally false. Which means, let's see, I use this test point. I'm looking at the green line. I use that test point, and I got a false. That means the true statements are on this opposite side up here. And of course, the actual solution is going to be the double shaded red and green. So we're going to take care of business by using the black pen showing the solution by really thickening up our shading just to highlight that this is the solution. And then of course, then of course this is, whoops, I almost forgot to dot it. Ooh, that would have been ugly because, well, I just lose some points. But anyway, so um, let's see. Let's go back and make sure this thing is dotted or dashed, some people like to call it. And of course, the black indicating the boundary here. Okay, there it is. Once again, the points in this double shaded region will work for both of these inequalities. That's why it solves the, solves the system. And if we happen to have a point that's right on that line, it will not work. And we show that by having a dotted line. All right. Now we finish up with a problem that might make your eyeballs pop out a little bit because, wow, look at all those. But um, 
This is something that uh, is called linear programming if you take a, um, a business algebra class, business pre-calculus, that kind of thing. Uh, but I won't get into too much more of that, but it's called linear programming. But So what we're going to do is we're going to graph all four uh, inequalities, and the region that is quadruple shaded is the solution. Now, that gets pretty messy, and I kind of want to take a second just to highlight this guy. Let me just highlight these two. Um, let's see. I want to highlight those two because... Um, remember, if this was x equals 0, that is what, a vertical line? And this one would just be y equals, and that's a horizontal line. So let's go back to the inequality. So this is saying x is greater than or equal to 0, so that's going to be these guys. And this one is saying y is greater than 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's going to be these guys over here. And you can see the double shape. So if it was just these two, if it was just those two, then our double sh shaded region, our answer would be quadrant 1. Right? If you're just talking, let's get a little sloppy. If you're just talking about those two inequalities, so whenever you see x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, we're just talking only about that first quadrant, right? Positive x's and positive y's. And so knowing that kind of saves us some heartache because, you know, it can get, it can get so messy with all this stuff. So let me get rid of all that. And knowing, knowing now that this stuff in blue right there Right, this stuff in blue right here is just saying, let's focus on the first quadrant. So I think I'm going to make that a little darker. Whoop, black. Um, it is equal, so it's going to be solid. And so that's we get that first quadrant. I'm not gonna shade it because it's gonna get so messy, it's gonna be a pain. Let's go ahead now, so we know everything now has to be only in the first quadrant. Let's go ahead and continue just like we've done before. I'm gonna make this red, and uh, let's go for it. So our first inequality is x plus y equals six. Subtract x on both sides, and we get y equals negative x plus 6. So our intercept is here at 6, y-intercept. And the slope is down 1, right 1. So we go down 1, right 1, and just does this. Remember that because of that equal sign, this is going to be a solid line. Remember also because of this blue, these two blue statements, we really only need to stay in the first quadrant. We can go out of that, but it's it's it won't you know it, it's it's already double shaded in that first quadrant, so all answers have to be in the first quadrant. So I'm just going to stick to that, and that probably should be a little bit darker. And that is my dog, awesome, great, making this place smell great. Anyways, um, so now we need to figure out where to shade this thing. Take the red uh, line and it says, so I need to do a test point, zero comma zero, and whoop, zero comma zero, and that red inequality is x, plus y is less than or equal to 6. Putting 0 in for x and y, you get 0 is less than or equal to 6. So is that true or false? 0 is less than or equal to 6. That's true. So that means our test point, which happened to be this guy right here, right? 0, comma 0 was our test point. That was true, so we are going to shade to 
towards that test point. Now we have our next um, inequality to take care of, and that's going to be this last one right here. Let's put that down here, and we're going to use 2x plus y equals 10. So we subtract 2x off of both sides, and we get y equals negative 2x plus 10. So the y-intercept is 10, and the slope is the slope is negative 2 over 1. That means down a 2 and right 1. So we go down 1, 2, right 1, 1, 2, right 1, 1, 2, right 1, 1, 2, right 1, 1, 2, right 1. Which puts us right there at 5, I believe, yeah. So now we go ahead and draw this line in. Gonna make it a little bit thicker. And we get a test point going here. Right? Test point zero comma zero. And we go to that original green inequality, which says two times x plus y. What was that original one? Two times x is less than or equal to ten. Of course, when we put in our zeros, we get 0 is less than or equal to 10, which is definitely true. True. And so we shade towards the point zero, 0, which is true. So then we shade this way. Of course, the answer is the double shaded. In this case, really... Really, in this case, I think, let me just show it. In this case, it's the quadruple shade region because remember, we had, I think I'm going to do it. We had um, x is greater than or equal to 0, which, which produced all of this. And then we had y, maybe I'll use another color. Then we had y is greater than or equal to 0, which would have produced this. And so the quadruple shaded, what a mess, the quadruple shaded region is going to be, and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. Let's see if I can do it. Jeez, I can't see. The quadruple is right here. So it goes from there to there. Then it hits that point and goes straight down. Okay, I wish I made that a little straighter now. Let me see. I feel like I've got to fix it now that we're this far into this whole thing. Let me try that again. So it is going to start at 6. It's going to go to this point of intersection, and then it's going to go straight down. Okay, that's better. Now um, let's take a look. Now the shading, of course, the quadruple shaded region is going to be this stuff right here. Okay, so the question is, is this bounded? Yes, it's bounded. Bounded means it's, it's contained on all sides. Um, what are the corner points? Ooh, okay, now we got more work. Well, some of them are easy. Corner points are just, are just these corners here, right? Zero comma zero, that's one of them. Use commas in between your uh, ordered pairs. Um, then we've got this guy right here, which is 5 comma 0. That's not too bad. And then we got this one right here, which is 0 comma 6. That's not too bad. And then you might be able to cheat and look at that and call it 4 comma 2, but technically we probably should algebraically figure it out. And so, and so you just take that, turn them into equations, and solve the system of equations, just like we did in 3.1. So I'll go ahead and take my red... Um, inequality and write it as an equation because if it's an equation it's a line and we want to know where those two basically I want to know right here right there where does a green and red line cross each other so I take the red line which was x plus y equals 6 and I take the green line which happened to be 2x plus y equals 10 and I can solve it by substitution or Addition elimination does not matter. It's totally your choice. I guess since I have it written like this, I think what I'm going to do is multiply the red 
by negative 2. I'm about ready to sneeze. Can I hold it off or not? I don't know. Distribute the negative 2. So we got negative 2x minus 2y. Don't forget to multiply the right side by negative 2 also. That's a common mistake. Negative 12. And then I'm just going to copy down this in green. 2x plus y equals 10. And of course, negative 2x positive 2x zeroes out. Negative y and a 1 makes negative y. And that equals negative 2. And I multiply both sides by negative and I get y equals positive 2. That is definitely matching what I thought, right? Doesn't that look like a positive 2? Don't do that. Come on, get out of there. There we go. So that is a positive 2 for y. Um, so that is a positive 2 for y. Now I just need to get my x value. And all I have to do is take my original red inequality, x plus y equals 6. You could use the other equation as well, but this one looks easier. And I'm just going to stick my 2 right there. x plus 2 equals 6. Subtract 2 on both sides, and x equals 4. And so there we go. Yes, that's exactly what I thought it was, right? 4 comma 2. That's that point right there. 4 comma 2. And we're done. And I hope that helped out. I tried to give you some tips about graphing. Um, you're going to want to use the linear equation, the line tool to graph. You're going to want to make sure you select dotted or solid. You're going to want to use the paint bucket, the splash paint in the side that you're, that you're shading. And then in the end, you want to identify the double shaded region, and that gets the final paint a splash or paint shading. And I didn't realize it before, but you could always take the paint off by clicking on it, highlighting it, and hitting delete. If you hit clear, the whole thing blows away and you're going to be upset. Um, but you can, And you could also click on a paint bucket and move that paint splash to another region after you've, after you've made your graphs, okay? So hopefully that saves you some time. All right, I hope everything, uh, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're getting caught up. I know some people need to definitely get going. Um, this stuff just uh, adds up and adds up. So hit it now and you'll be happy when you uh, get to a Monday, Monday after you turn in that test and everything goes great. So hope everybody's doing great and have a good one. Take care. Bye.